Hey Puzzlers, this is Steven here with what is officially my 100th episode on the channel. I've mostly been doing uh, tutorials on logic puzzles, but today I wanted to do something uh, fun and a little bit different. So I'm going to be sharing with you my top 10 favorite logic puzzles that are not Sudokus. So without further ado, number 10 is Battleships. So Battleships is a very popular logic puzzle. It's very similar to the two-player board game played by young kids. But this, of course, is a one-player puzzle and uh, requires a little bit more strategy and brain power, in my opinion. Essentially, what you're doing is you're using the numbers along the outside of the grid to uh, highlight where ship segments are within the puzzle. There's a ton of variants out there. Uh, one popular variant is the Minesweeper variant, where instead of the numbers being outside the grid, they're inside the grid, showing you how many ship segments are adjacent to that number. Other variants exist like the Lighthouse variant, uh, Digital Battleship, and then also, of course, Sudoku Battleship. So lots of fun. Give that a shot. I'll post the link in the description below of the tutorial and where you can find uh, some of these puzzles to try yourself. Number nine is Picross or Nonograms, also known as Griddlers. This is probably the most famous uh, or popular puzzle besides Sudoku. Uh, Nintendo has a very popular game called Picross on the Switch, um, and there's also plenty of uh, apps on the iPhone or Android or your tablet. Basically what you're doing is you're using the numbers along the outside of the grid to tell you which cells to shade in and which cells not to shade in. And what's fun is a lot of the times at the end it's going to end up looking like a pixelated photo of something, uh, so a lot of people enjoy that aspect of the puzzle. Number eight is Litz, which is especially fun for me because it reminds me of Tetris. You're basically using Tetris shapes or tetrominoes and putting them within the regions so that they're all adjacent to one another, uh, but not sharing uh, two regions of the same type of, of shapes. You can't have two L's uh, next to each other or two S's next to each other. Number seven is Cave, Bag, or also what's known as Corral. What you're doing is you're using the numbers inside the grid to tell you how many uh, unshaded cells are orthogonally jutting out from that number. So you can see if there's a five, uh, you might see four to the left and one up, or you know three horizontally and, and two vertically from that number. And basically you're creating walls, uh, which are the shaded ones, and, and then a pathway around the walls. So that's the cave, lots of fun. Number six is Tapa. Tapa reminds me a lot of Minesweeper because the clues tell you how many adjacent uh, cells are shaded, but they all have to be uh, orthogonally connected to one another. So you're creating kind of a path uh, through the puzzle. So what's fun about Tapa too is once you get good at the original puzzle, there's a ton of variants out there as well uh, to mix up the rules for you. Number five is Masu. If you ever get tired of putting in numbers in a puzzle or working with numbers, this one has no numbers whatsoever. You're just essentially drawing lines through circles. If you have an unshaded circle, you're going right through it. If you have a shaded circle, you basically hit the circle and then make a right turn. So lots of fun. Give that one a shot. Again, I'm going to post the link in the description below of where you can play these and my tutorial of how to play them. Number four, probably the most unique one on the list, at least in my opinion, is Aquarium. What I like about Aquarium is there is a theme to it. It feels uh, a little bit more tangible compared to the others. It's not just uh, pure numbers and lines. There's an actual theme of filling up these regions or aquariums with water. I think of them as fish bowls. Basically, as you pour water into it, the water fills out evenly. So if you fill in one cell within a region, you have to fill all of the cells in that same row of that region. And you can't uh, have you know, an unshaded cell and then water and an unshaded cell. Basically, it's like a fish tank. You fill up some of the water up a per portion of the way, and then there's air for the rest of the region. The numbers indicate how many shaded cells are in that row or column. So try out Aquarium, again, one of my favorites. Number three is Minesweeper. Most of you have already probably played the computer version. If you're into puzzles, you probably like it. 
We'll try the pen and paper version as well. Here they give you all of the clues up front. There's no random clicking. Uh, there's no guessing or 50-50 chance of hitting a mine because, again, they give you all the clues up front. So tons of fun. Same rules as the computer game. Um, so if you know how to play that, you'll enjoy this. Uh, and it's pretty good. Number two is Nurkab. Nurkab is fun because the numbers uh, indicate islands. Uh, a six means that there's six unshaded cells uh, orthogonally adjacent to it, creating an island. And the shaded cells, think of it as water flowing between the islands. So the islands don't touch one another. And so it's, uh, it's nice. I, I, I like the theme. Um, I think the logic plays out very interesting. It's not like you're placing any numbers on the grid. Essentially, you're just shading some cells and not shading others. So definitely a lot of fun. Uh, again, a very popular one. There's tons of them out there. Um, again, I'll post the link in the description of a great website you can go to uh, to play them. And lastly, number one, Nonro or Signpost. This is probably the most unique one that I've seen in a while. Um, I've done about 50 tutorials and this is the one that I had the most fun doing because what you're doing is you're creating a bridge or a pathway. All the numbers have to be connected. There's all these different regions. If you have a one, there can only be one digit in that region. If you have a two, there has to be two digits in that region. If you have a four, there has to be four digits in that region and so forth. And no two numbers of the same type can be next to each other. So tons of fun. Uh, I've really enjoyed doing these tutorials, so I hope you check them out yourself. If you've liked this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night.